So we have this kind of goofy two lecture week, or two lectures for us at least. It's business as usual. Um, there will be two assignments up because the 3.8 assignment didn't get posted. Sorry about that. I wrote all of those over the summer, and at some point I stopped posting them. I don't know. I must have figured I'd do it later, but I need to uh, get that corrected. So I'll get on that. But the topic of the day is linearization. And the topic of the day, as I've chosen to call it, is really an old topic given a new name. So linearizations are really just tangent lines. So let's remind ourselves a tangent line is a line through a point whose Slope is the derivative. So when we first talked about tangent lines it was back when we didn't really have any good way of finding derivatives, but now we do, and finding tangent lines is hopefully relatively straightforward. You done writing? Okay. Example. Let's find the line. Tangent to F of X equals no need, no need for anything complicated here. F of X equals the sine of X at the point. the square root of 2 over 2, comma, the square root of 2 over 2. You might or might not remember all of those sines and cosines you had to memorize in pre-calculus. It doesn't really matter, but the sine of, what am I doing? This really matters. The sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. So the sine of x goes through that point. And for the tangent line, we need two things. I mean, we need two things to find any line. Well, we've got a point. We need a point, and we've got it. So, thing one, check. We need a point, or rather, we need a slope. And the slope is going to come from the derivative. So the derivative of the sine is the cosine. We take that pi over 4. And the derivative at pi 
i over 4 is, as it happens, also the square root of 2 over 2. Pi over 4 is the angle where the sine and the cosine are the same. And then once we have a point and we have a slope, we can find the equation of a line. I mean, let's just use the point-slope form. Y minus the y-coordinate equals Um, y minus the y coordinate. <laughs> Sorry, sleeping in for the, all those days seems to have scrambled my brain. It equals the slope times x minus. the x coordinate. So, unless I've done something terribly wrong, that should be the tangent line. And I want to look at this graphically. So we'll go to we'll go to sorry, I not show political stuff in my class of my own volition. We'll go to desmos.com and this is, let's see, y minus the y coordinate minus the y coordinate equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate. So there's what I, <coughs> what I do it. yeah, yeah, there's the tangent line. I'm looking at the function f of x equals the sine of x. I'm looking at the point pi over 4 comma the square root of 2 divided by 2. Okay, and after a kind of bumpy start, we do have everything correct. This is the tangent line. It just brushes the curve against this point. And the kind of take-home message of the day comes from zooming in on this point. So here is the sine of x, here is the tangent line. I'm just, I mean, they look identical at this magnification. A red, blue, colorblind student would not be able to distinguish these curves at this magnification. <clears throat> And let me now write that down on the whiteboard as an observation. Near the point x zero comma y zero. The function f of x looks 
line. The tangent line. And the tangent line, if we were using a point slope form, y minus y zero equals the slope which is the derivative times x minus x zero. And let's take that y zero over <coughs> to the right. It's more traditional to have y by itself. After all. So here is the tangent line. <coughs> And this tangent line is also called the linearization. Of the line at the point. So when I said that the linearization, I said this back on the first frame, when I said that the linearization was really just an old topic, the tangent line, given another name, I was being extremely literal. The linearization at a point is the tangent line. So what's the significance of this? Well, the significance of the linearization is related to this statement, that the line and the function look the same near the point. The linearization, linearization is used as an approximation to If you're only interested in what a function is doing near some value, you can replace a complicated function with a straight line. And again, as long as you're only interested in what happens near some point, so in this case, if we're only interested in what happens near the point, pi over four comma square root of two over two, then we can just replace the sine function with this line and there's basically no harm done. I mean, if you're working in the real world, you're already rounding, right? I mean, you're not keeping an infinite number of decimals. You see that Desmos is keeping just 0 0.7071 in place of the square root of 2 over 2. So if we're rounding to just four decimal places, we could afford to go out a little. If we're rounding to just four decimal places, this curve, this straight line, 
and this curve, this sign, are taking on the same values. And, I mean, it might not seem like an improvement, because the way it's written, this curve looks very ugly, and this curve looks very simple, but of course the opposite is true. I mean, we teach college algebra students to find the slopes of lines and stuff. A high school student can work with a line, whereas the trig function, the sine, has this very weird definition in terms of circles and is really quite a bit harder to work with. So the idea of linearization, once again, just summarizing what I've been saying, is to replace complicated functions with simple functions. We don't, or we can't, let's say, really dig into the applications of linearization in Math 151. This really starts getting its power, you know, visibly demonstrated in maybe a differential equations course. But I can sort of at least touch on one application of linearization, which is using calculus to try to predict the future. So, sadly, a little less glamorous than that might make it sound, but let's say we're in some kind of applied situation, maybe the old marginal cost situation where x is the number of units manufactured and why is the profit and let's say we've been increasing production so up to the number of units that are currently being manufactured, we can generate some kind of curve. And we want to know, so what happens if we up production? What happens to our profit? Does it go up? Does it go down? What happens to it? And I mean, the issue with asking that question, I mean, just sort of algebraically, is that we don't know what the function does. We just have this blank space here. So then help to this comes to the rescue and says, well, just based solely on the curve that we've drawn so far, we can take the current point and we can draw the tangent line. And the tangent line and the real curve should look similar. In fact, if we're close enough to the point, it should look identical. 
So if we want to predict what happens in the future, we can look at what the tangent line is doing in the future and then use the tangent line to approximate the value of the profit, to approximate the real value. That, of course, is also what we were doing with marginal profit. So, going back to what I said, this linearization is just old material, sort of given a new coat of paint. Nevertheless, because it's so important in any application involving differential equations, we want to make sure that we understand it. Uh, does anybody have any questions before I keep going? So the sort of textbook questions or sort of standard practice is always a little silly, but if you look at a calculus textbook, you find problems like linearize f of x was the square root of x at the point 4, comma, 2. Then approximate the square root of 4.0017. And as I say, I mean, this example is in one sense a little goofy, because if we wanted to approximate that square root, we could just plug it into our calculator. But what this is trying to get at is this idea that we can use um, these linearizations as approximation tools. So even if this isn't necessarily how we'd approach this square root in the real world, let's obey the instructions, find the linearization, and then do the approximation. <clears throat> the linearization is the tangent line. Y equals Y zero plus the derivative times x minus x zero. And I guess if I had to pinpoint the place where students sometimes struggle, it's that they get a little ahead of themselves and try to use that 4.0017 in the linearization. And that is not an appropriate thing to do. We are linearizing around this point, and that those are the values that show up in the linearization. And just to make sure I'm not sort of moving too fast for anyone, we're using uh, 
I mean, we start with that. That's the point slope form. You should know this. If not, you should review it. And then I'm just saying, well, okay, we can add two to both sides and get to that equation of the line. So the only thing we really need for this linearization uh, the eraser instead, the only thing we really need for this first step is we need to know what that derivative is. Once we found <coughs> Once we found the derivative, we can approximate um, the square root that we're asked for using this linearization. And hopefully, I mean, I don't have to hope. I've looked at, looked at your tests. Everyone seems pretty confident with these elementary derivatives. The derivative of the square root is 1 over 2 times the square root of x. Using the power rule there, remember that the square root is the 1 half power. So f prime of 4 equals 1 over 2 times the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So there is our derivative, 1, 4. And now we're interested in this function at 4, point zero, zero, 1, 7. So we just take 4.0017 and we plug it in. And after eight weeks, I still somehow forget that this calculator needs to be pre booted up. So give us about 20 to 30 seconds. exaggerating, maybe that's closer to 15. Uh, move stuff around the screen so I can see. 2 plus 1 fourth, let's go back and forth. 2 plus 1 fourth times 4.0017 minus 4. And this is allegedly approximating the square root of 4.00. 1, 7. Let's take a look. It is, and it's doing quite a good job of it. So our approximation is accurate up to six decimal places. That is, this number up here, our approximation, is just what we'd get if we took our real square root and rounded it to six decimals. 
face is. So as long as we are close to the value we linearize around, linearizations give very good approximations. And I've left this sort of implicit, maybe. Let me say it explicitly. A linearization is only any good near the value you linearize it around. Hence the reason that we can't all get rich by looking at graphs of stock prices, finding tangent lines, and trying to predict what the stock market will be doing in a week. Going back to this example, you could look at, you could ask about the square root of 10, but you're not going to get any good approximation because 10 is so far away from 4. So for this to give us a good approximation, we needed an input, this 4.0017, that was close to the input we linearized around. And we can very easily see that if we try to approximate the square root of 10, using this linearization, we would get 3.5. The real square root of 10 is about 3.16. So we're now off at the very first decimal face. This is not a good approximation of the square root of 10. So you need, you really do need to be near the value that you're interested in. Does anybody have any questions about this general idea? Then let's have you do a quick variation on the problem we just did. Instead of the square root, let's have you take a look at the cube root at the point eight comma two and then once you've done that linearization let's estimate the cubed root of seven point nine nine eight three and you can also find the actual cubed root on your calculator and compare your approximation to the real answer. And I, most students at least seem close to me being done. Um, so 
just maybe touching on the highlights, f of x equals x to the one-third, remember? So f prime of x is one-third x. to the negative two-thirds, or one over three times x, to the positive two-thirds, and you're maybe less likely to just do this in your head than you were with the square root example, but this should be one twelfth. And you, as I say, you could just plug that into your calculator if that's uh, not clear to you, but x to the two thirds is the cubed root squared. So the cubed root is two, the cubed root squared is four, four times three is twelve. Or you could use your calculator, as I say. So if we use L for the linearization, it's the y value plus the derivative times x minus the x value. And then the x value that we're interested in is that. I guess another error I sometimes see is that students will use their calculator to find the root that I just asked you to estimate. And then once you've found the cubed root, take that and plug it in for x. Um, but that's, again, not really what we're doing here. We've got this value of x we're interested in. We plug it into our calculator. We get whatever we get. Does someone want to give me a decimal? 1.999. Okay, is, is that all? Well, eight, no, eight, five, eight, 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 we want to talk about differentials, which is a kind of related technique that is also presented in this section. We'll do that bright and early Thursday. And then I'll also, as I say, I mean, the tests must be in my apartment. I'll dig them up and give them back to you tomorrow as well. I meant to do that today. But... Oh. I did it right the first time.